Pathologically narcissistic people experience extreme boredom and this causes a lot of problems in their interpersonal relationships. In this video, I'm going to go over what this means and why they struggle with this. Welcome to Looking Behind the Mirror, where we explore narcissism and take our lives back as we make sense out of nonsense. As a quick disclaimer, everything I say is based on my opinions and my personal experiences. I'm not a professional, and if you're really struggling, I encourage you to seek professional help. I am providing links below for you. Boredom is something that we might not think of a lot when we think of pathologically narcissistic people, but this is something that they all struggle with. And boredom for a narcissist is far more painful than it is for normal people. And there's several reasons for this. A narcissist's boredom can also be looked at as emptiness. A narcissist's boredom is related to their lack of identity and the lack of meaning in their life and the lack of sense of purpose that they have. It's a listlessness and this boredom can be experienced and kind of visualized in the mind of a narcissist in many different ways. One way that it can be visualized is as a vast emptiness, as a giant hole in the middle of their soul that's just like a vacuum, just sucking everything into it and never being satisfied with anything that it collects from outside of itself. Boredom really isn't a strong enough word, but it is a boredom. It's a pathological boredom. One way that you can view boredom is waiting. When you are bored, you're waiting for something or you're looking for something. You feel a purposelessness and you're looking for something to occupy your mind and to make you feel like the time that's going by has some kind of meaning to it. Narcissists are really stuck in this place because nothing they ever do really has any meaning. Some things they do feel like they have meaning, but for a very short amount of time, all the meaning that they feel in life is extremely fleeting and is just gone moment to moment, leaving them feeling empty again. It's like they are in a constant state of waiting for something that will never happen. In a sense, they live their entire lives waiting for nothing. For normal people, we can spend our lives waiting for things. We wait for the movie to start in a theater. We wait to get off work at the end of the day. We wait for our meal to arrive. But in the moments that we're waiting for, we feel fulfillment when the things that we're waiting for happen. Our lives have meaning because we recognize the value and meaning in the things that we're waiting for. When we get home from work and we see the people that we love in our home, or when we go out and visit the people that we love in our lives, we feel a sense of purpose. We feel meaning. It's a lasting meaning and it's something that means something to us. And it's something that still means something to us the next day. Narcissists don't feel this way. They feel a deep emptiness within them and the relationships that they have in their lives don't fulfill them in the way they do normal people. The meaning that you have to a narcissist is how you're making them feel in that moment. And that's all you mean to a narcissist ever. So the day after you've interacted with a narcissist, there is nothing about you that means anything to them anymore. There's no lingering meaning or value in your relationship. And because narcissists have very little empathy, they don't mind hurting people in order to alleviate their own boredom. Their boredom is painful to them. So they have no trouble picking fights with people, abusing people, stirring up drama, causing trouble, putting other people in pain in order to alleviate their own pain or their own boredom. And this is exacerbated by the fact that they will project this boredom onto other people. They will project the responsibility and the blame onto other people. So in their mind, it's your fault that they're bored. And for those narcissists that are more self-aware, they may resent you for not feeling this vast emptiness that they live with 24 seven. In a life where everyone around them has been given a sense of purpose and meaning that they just don't have and never will, it's hard not to resent other people. And it's hard not to take it out on other people and not to cause pain in people that don't have the same pain they do in order to alleviate the pain that they have. Or in other words, they feel justified in inflicting pain on other people in order to alleviate their own boredom because it's not fair that they have to feel this pain all the time where other people don't. 
Of course, many of them aren't conscious of it on this level and they really do feel like it's your fault somehow that they're bored. I remember a narcissistic relationship that I was in in which I was actually being told to my face that I was a boring person. This was years into the relationship and I was told that I never wanted to do anything exciting anymore. This person would actually get angry at me for not having any ideas as to what we could be doing together that would be fun. This person would often call me during the day and say, what do you want to do tonight? And I actually got to the point where I would panic when I would hear this question because I would feel like if I don't come up with something fantastic, I'm going to be yelled at and criticized all night for not being exciting enough. But the funny thing is when I would actually come up with ideas for things that we could do, this person didn't really seem to care or respond. It was like this person just wanted to complain about how boring I was, but didn't actually want a solution. And the truth is with pathologically narcissistic people, there is no solution to this boredom. It really is a terrible predicament to be in. There's nothing you can do to alleviate this boredom without sacrificing your own welfare. This is why narcissists will pick fights with you over nothing. This is why it seems like they don't really want solutions to your arguments because often they don't. Sometimes they just want to fight with you because it helps distract them from the boredom and the pain and the emptiness that they live with 24 seven. So this is why they could actually get more angry with you when you come up with solutions to these arguments that they work so hard to create. They don't want a solution, they want to fight. They want the boredom to go away. They want a distraction. They don't want you to fix the problem that they're complaining about. They worked really hard to find that problem. This is why they will start drama. And a lot of them will start drama in other people while keeping their hands clean. You know, maybe they'll whisper a rumor over to this person over here, but then they'll tell this other person something else and then they'll watch these two people fight with each other over something that the narcissist actually created. This is exciting to them. This makes them feel like they have purpose in their lives or it takes the place of real purpose and real meaning. This is why they might enjoy messing with you. And like I said earlier, they don't have enough empathy to care about the pain that it can cause you to be gaslit and just manipulated and lied to. Some of them will just play mind games with you simply to entertain themselves. This is also a reason that addiction is so common with pathologically narcissistic people. The addiction itself is a way to distract themselves from their day-to-day -day life. It's a way to alleviate their pain. It's something to do and it's something that helps them feel some sort of purpose. It can give them a bit of a dopamine rush and just distract them from real life for a little bit. This is also why they might be more likely to engage in extreme sports or in risky behaviors than the average person. This is why a lot of them might be considered adrenaline junkies. This is why a lot of them might take really foolish risks. But no matter what a narcissist does to alleviate this boredom, their solutions never last. Nothing ever sticks for very long because nothing really means anything to them. For a pathologically narcissistic person, their life is one big long string of waiting for something that's never going to happen, of a meaningless existence that stretches out into what seems like an eternity. For normal people, our lives are filled with waiting for meaningful things to happen and then enjoying meaningful things as they happen. And then along the way, remembering the things that mean things to us and continuing to engage in things that have meaning to us and building a sense of purpose in our lives through connecting with people, through appreciating people, through helping people. Narcissists are never fulfilled by anything that really means anything. Boredom chases them through their whole lives and some of them actually visualize it as some sort of entity that's constantly right behind them. If you are close with a narcissistic person, you are always going to end up being somebody that they consider boring. This is part of why you can't help but disappoint them because you can't solve this problem for them and you can't entertain them and distract them from this emptiness for very long. This is a big part of what they expect from you when they idealize you. They expect you to cure their boredom. They expect you to fill their emptiness. 
but this is something that no one can ever do for them. And while I truly hope that there's hope for everyone, I'm not sure if even the narcissist could ever learn how to fill this hole inside of themselves. The important thing for us to take away from this and for us to understand it's, is that this isn't our fault and that it's not our job to entertain somebody that suffers from pathological boredom. And it can help us understand why we're being treated in ways that are really just alleviating somebody else's pain. It's not because of anything we've done. And it can help us not take this so personally when we understand that the abuse that's inflicted on us is because of the pain of the person it's coming from. Not to excuse this behavior at all, but to understand that it's not because of anything that we've done and there is nothing that we can do to solve it. I hope this helps. If you find this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and comment below any ideas you have for me for future videos. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like this video and would like to see more like it in the future. Until next time, thanks. Bye.